Hello. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Glitter Goddess Yoga. It is Saturday, April 4th, 2020. Um, so great to see some of y'all hopping on. Today is a love your body flow. Um, really excited to practice with everyone this morning. Um, I've been up for a few hours. Um, I'm also teaching a yoga teacher training virtually, which is totally weird. And so just had some practice teaches this morning, which has been really awesome. It's really cool to build an army of healers right now. Um, and it's really powerful to have folks so committed to building that practice and really, really, really honored to be with my Breathe for Change folks. Um, so as folks are hopping on, um, I wanted to invite us to have a pillow or a sofa cushion, um, as well as a tennis ball or a massage ball or even a book, anything that has a corner on it. So like, I'll get an example. Even if you have a yoga block or, or a hardcover book that has a corner like this, um, something, something that has a corner or a massage ball or a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball, something small, um, we're going to use it to love our body. Um, so again, if you're hopping on, uh, feel free to pause this as well and then you can just continue, but, um, we'd love to have a pillow, a blanket, and some type of, some type of hardcover book or ball that we can use for some self-massage work. Um, and then before we get started in our breathing practice, um, it's great to see some friends hopping on. I'd love to ask to um, ask us to post in the comments um, what's something that you love about your body today. So um, I know for me, uh, well, I love my hair. I love my beard. I love my body hair. Um, I haven't always loved being a hairy person, but I like it now. Um, and I also love, um, I love my groove. I love my body's groove. When my body's feeling cared for and when I've taken tension out of my body and I can really let my body groove and dance, I just love that feeling. I love how my body looks. And I love how my body feels when I'm dancing and grooving um, and just feeling some good beats or some nice music. Hey, Jackie. So if you're just hopping on, I'd love for us to share in the comments what's something that you love about your body today? Um, what is something that you love about your body today? Please, please, please write in the comments and share. If you're not comfortable writing in the comments, that's okay. You can just think to yourself or write on your own. So just for another maybe 30 seconds or so, inviting us to share in the comments, what do you love about your body today? Um, and then also grabbing a pillow, a blanket, and either a hardcover book or a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball. Um, would love to see a few more notes in the comments about what we love about our bodies. And I'm just gonna make sure, um, soft skin, shoulders, strong shoulders. Yes. So we're writing what we love about our body in the comments. I'm gonna check my camera angle and make sure I'm good. I'm using my phone today.
If you're just hopping on, would love to hear what you love about your body today. All right. If you're hopping in, would love to have a few folks share in the comments, what do you love about your body today? And if you've already wrote down in a journal or wrote in the comments, um, we can start gently coming into some deep breaths, find a comfortable seat. If you're just hopping on, would love, love, love to have you share in the comments, what do you love about your body today? Um, my big old butt. <laughs> I love that. What do you love about your body today? And when you're ready, let's ground in a comfortable seat. Wiggle the hips just a bit. Finding length in the spine, finding length particularly on the top back of the head. And I'll invite us to just bring some intention to the breath, slowing the breath down. Long inhales, slow controlled exhales. Making each breath just a bit slower, just a bit more controlled, inhaling to feel the core expand, belly button pushing out. Exhale, let the shoulders feel heavy. Bring the belly button in towards the spine. We're pushing the air out of the lungs. Inhaling to pull the core down. Exhaling to release. Trying to make each breath just a bit slower, just a bit more controlled, just a bit longer. Inhaling to feel our body expand and inflate like a balloon. Exhaling to release, to deflate, to sink heavy. So I asked us to grab a pillow for this flow today. If you don't have a pillow, you could go grab one. You can pause, I believe you can pause and just go grab one. Um, and actually I'm gonna use a smaller pillow. So what, regardless of how big your pillow is, we're gonna have a seat and we're gonna place that pillow just behind our lower back. So we have our pillows here at our lower back and I'll invite us to roll back here. Now, if our pillow is super close to the ground, we might want to fold it. If it's feeling a little bit too high, maybe we can find something with a little less cushion or a little less height. Um, you can also take multiple pillows. So right now my head is, my back is kind of arched and my head's resting on the floor. If you want to put another pillow under your head, like so, you can. So we're gonna move into this fish pose just for some spinal lengthening to warm us up. We're gonna start off a little different today. Letting the shoulders feel heavy. The legs can stay as they are. We can bend the knees and plant the feet. We can also 
place a, a pillow or a cushion underneath our knees for a little bit of elevation. So let's slow the breath down here, lengthening the spine, feeling heavy in the ankles, heavy in the toes, feeling heavy in the knees. Release the hips. Feel the spine lengthen. Shoulders melting towards the floor. And here in this restorative fist, I'll invite us just to connect with some celebration for ourself. Just waking up to practice yoga together is such a beautiful act of love for your body. Um, and I'd love to frame this time together as loving our body. I mean, in a way, every, every time we stretch or take out tension or practice strength or exercise in any way, we are truly loving our body, um, our sacred body. Um, so in this moment, just celebrating the fact that you're here, you woke up, you logged on, even if you're wrapped up in a Snuggie right now, drinking some Saturday morning wine, that's a form of loving your body too. So even if you're noticing, like, I'm not showing up in the way that maybe most others are showing up, or I'm not showing up in the way that I thought I would, even if you're just listening to us still lying in bed on a Saturday morning, you're loving your body by making a choice, by listening to your body. So just meeting ourselves where we're at, loving where we're at this morning, loving however we're showing up to our practice this morning, and remembering that waking up together to think about our bodies, to breathe together, is an act of love for our bodies. And maybe we can connect with something we wrote in the chat before we got started, or maybe we just want to reflect on it more, but I'd love for us to think about what are we loving about our bodies right now? What parts of our body need the most love right now? What parts of our body are we simply thinking about because we can feel them, because we're aware of them? And inviting us to cultivate weightlessness on the inhale and exhaling just to feel heavy where we are. And however we want, comfortable pressing up, comfortably pressing up to a seat. Okay, and next up we're gonna zoom in to the feet. So another thing I asked us to grab for our flow today was a hardcover book or a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball or a massage ball. So please pause if you don't have something. Um, so it could be just a simple, simple ball like this or a yoga block, or um, a hardcover book, or Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, and the next thing we're gonna do to love our bodies is to give ourselves a feet massage. So in our feet, we have something called fascia. Fascia is like a netting um, that helps hold our muscles together. And that netting, just like this, that netting can start to get bulky and can start to, um, uh, 
and, and that will be felt like tension in our body. And so simple massage techniques and fascia release techniques um, can help relieve some of that tension and help bring a little bit more balance to our body. Um, and it can feel really great. So what we're gonna do is work with our arches first. And I'm actually gonna encourage us to stand, but just so you can see me, I'm gonna stay sitting. Um, so we're gonna take the ball or the corner of our block, and we're just gonna press into our arches, okay? So right now I'm rolling my foot on this lacrosse ball. If we have a book or a block, we can just press into the corner or into the edge. And if we don't have a prop, we can just sit and press in with our thumbs and we can just massage our arches with our thumbs. So we're gonna spend a good amount of time here just working on taking care of our feet. Our feet have this triangular base that's so well designed to keep us balanced. And our feet do so much work to collect information, to connect us to the earth, to keep us standing, to get us where we need to go. So giving some love to our feet. I'm still on the first foot. I haven't switched yet. And whether we're rubbing or maybe starting to dig in and lean in with some of that weight. And if this prop that you found isn't serving you, if it's too soft or too hard, find something else. Playing with flexing the foot and pointing the foot. maybe another minute here just self-massaging our first foot going into the arch really pressing into the arches maybe we're massaging with our hands maybe we're rolling a ball maybe we're using a block or a hardcover book maybe there's a piece of furniture that has a nice corner on it that we can just rub our foot let's go ahead and switch feet so moving to the other side, continue breathing deeply, loving our feet, taking care of our feet. And you might even notice as you start to release some fascia, you might start to find little moments of release in other parts of your body. So like, I just felt some fascia release in my arch and I felt that in my calf. So noticing how releasing tension in one part of our body can actually provide relief in another part of our body as well. Taking care of our other arch, really digging in as, as much as we can comfortably, safely. I mean, I will say it's a little painful, um, but it's that good kind of pain, like I'm, get, I'm addressing tension pain. It's not something that feels like a pinch or a pop or, an, or a snap in my nerves, so. Definitely want to avoid sensations that feel like a pinch, pop, or snap. But if it's if it's pain because there's tension, then we can lean into that pain a little bit because it's painful to address tension, period. So a few more moments to really dig into that other foot. If you're just joining us, we're taking care of our feet with some self-massage, um, pressing into the corner of a book or rolling our foot with a ball, maybe pressing into the corner of a piece of furniture we have, but really digging into the arch in particular. By now we should have done both feet. So notice how that feels, notice how it feels, maybe Give a little bit more love to both feet. And we'll meet sitting down. Okay. So, a few more things here. So we just took some good care of our feet. 
Let's roll our shoulders open. We've done a little bit of work with our spine. Let's do a little bit of work with our shoulders, loving our strong shoulders. These shoulders also hold mental stress, mental tension. These shoulder rolls are a great thing to do at your desk while you're doing virtual work. Fingertips to shoulders, drawing big circles with the elbows. If you are still working in some capacity, give yourself space to do some shoulder rolls and to take care of your upper back throughout your day. Full circumductions leading with the pinky. Inhale, squeeze the shoulders up. Exhale, release. Inhale, squeeze. Exhale, release. Inhale, squeeze. Exhale, release. And now, I want to review um, one of my favorite stress relieving breathing techniques. Um, and so if you're feeling uh, the impacts of anxiety, of stress, um, uh, then this is a, one of my favorite ways to just kind of bring myself back to earth. Um, and so we'll breathe in for four, squeezing the shoulders up. We'll hold our breath for four, um, holding the shoulders here, and then we'll release the shoulders down, exhaling for four. So breathing in, two, three, four, hold the shoulders, two, three, four, exhale down, two, three, four, inhale up, two, three, four, hold the breath here, two, three, four, exhale down, two, three, four, inhale up, two, three, four, hold the breath here, two, three, four, exhale down, two, three, four, inhale up, two, three, four, hold the breath here, two, three, four, exhale down, two, three, four, inhale, reach the arms up, and we'll bring the palms together. It's okay if the elbows are bent. And I'm just gonna encourage us to rock from side to side, opening up the obliques, opening up the side body. And one thing I'm gonna encourage is to try to keep both butt cheeks on the floor. So try to keep both hips on the floor. So instead of rocking and lifting up the hips, let's try to keep those hips down so that our core is really doing the work Part of loving our body is inviting our body to remember how strong it is. Pressing the hips down as we rock from side to side. And then give yourself a full stretch on the oblique, reaching the right arm up and over, press the right hip down, press the right knee down, tilt the chest up towards the ceiling, inhale, expand. Exhale, deflate. Reaching up and over to the other side. Inhale, lengthen, expand. Exhale, deepen, release. Keep pressing that left hip down. Reaching up and back to center. All right, so bringing ourselves up to standing. And planting the feet hip width apart. Pressing all the edges of the feet into the floor, noticing our outer edges, our inner edges, pressing into the floor, 
knees slightly bent, shake the hips. Releasing and neutralizing the hips. I'll invite us to put one hand behind our back, one hand in front, and just to tilt the pelvis back and forth. These are called posterior and anterior tilts. And keeping the knees bent and keeping the feet pressing into the floor, just noticing the impact of this tilt. Some of us might stay in a tilt longer than we should for the safety and health of our lower back. So we wanna bring some awareness to the tilt. It's okay to tilt the pelvis, you know, when we're dancing or when we're stretching or taking on a particular pose. Um, but we don't want the norm to be an overarch, or we don't want the norm to be that we're squeezing um, the cheeks under. So try to neutralize the hips, give it one more shake. Spine nice and tall, shoulders and chest open. Inhale, reaching up, Urdhva Hastasana, stretch the fingertips up, and exhale, folding down, press the heels into the floor, hinge the hips, round the spine, shake the head no, nod the head yes, inhale, bending at the knees, exhale, straighten. If you're not able to fully press into the floor here, just give yourself a stack of pillows or books or blocks so that you can press into the floor. Inhale, bend, exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend, exhale, straighten. Inhale, bend, exhale, straighten. Inhale, flat back, lengthening the spine, pressing the hands on the shins or the thighs. Please don't press on the knees. Reaching the back, top of the head forward, reaching the hips back, shoulders down. Take a few breaths here, really lengthening the spine. Feel the spine stretching long. And on your next exhale, bend the knees, roll down. And pressing the feet to the floor, slowly roll up. Vertebra by vertebra. Fingertips reaching towards the floor. Roll the shoulders up top. Inhale, arms up. Stretch the fingertips. Exhale, hands back to center. So let's check in. How did our lower body adjust there? Do we still feel like our feet are hip width apart? Are we pressing into all the edges? Are our knees still slightly bent? Is our hips still neutral and relaxed? And let's give ourselves a sun salutation B. Breathing in. Exhale, folding forward. Energizing the body. Inhale, lift, lengthen the spine. Bend the knees even more, plant the hands, and hop, walk, or step into your plank. Our plank can be palms, I'm gonna adjust. We can plant our wrists under our shoulders. We can bring our forearms down. We can drop the knees. There are lots of great ways to practice plank. And we're gonna breathe here for a few more breaths. Practicing strength. Loving our body by inviting some core work, some stability work, some strength work. Feel free to drop the knees at any point so that we can continue this work together. And slowly lower down when you're ready. Bringing the hands close to the shoulders, floating the palms up. Inhale, lift the chest. With each inhale, lift the chest just a bit more. Exhale, lower down. This time we can press into the floor. Keep the elbows close, keep the shoulders down, not sinking into the shoulders. And let's wiggle the hips here in this gentle cobra. Slowly bend the elbows, lowering down. Okay, let's rest the left ear on the floor, goal posting both elbows, making right angles with both of our elbows. Slide the right hand down. Let's roll the right leg into our back space. So 
My left elbow is on the floor. My left shoulder is on the floor. My left ear is on the floor. Breathing deeply, slowly, expansively here. Pressing the right hip forward. Get experimental with that right leg. It can be bent, it can be straight. And rolling back to center. Switching sides, resting the right ear on the floor. Right elbow rest on the floor. Slide the left hand down and roll the left leg into the back space. So my right ear is on the floor. My right shoulder is pressing into the floor. My right elbow is pressing into the floor, breathing deeply. Left leg is experimenting with what feels good. And rolling back to center. Pressing the hands into the floor. We can move into a child's pose or we can press up into a downward dog. All right, so I'm gonna take my socks off. If we are in a downward dog, I'll encourage us to start with bent knees. If we're in a child's pose, I'll encourage us to feel the hips open, lengthening the spine. So I'm bending my knees so that I can maximize the lengthening work in my spine. My shoulders are in their sockets. Base of the thumb joint pressing down. And I'll alternate bended knees here. If we're in child's pose, we're breathing deeply, feeling heavy in the hips. If we're in downward dog, we're lifting the hips up and back. If we do straighten the legs, we can press the heels down towards the floor. And if we're in child's pose, we can come to our knees. If we're in downward dog, we can lift the right leg up and bring the right leg forward planting right knee on top of right ankle. So some of us might be in a knee down lunge right here. We can lift that back knee if we want, or we can leave our knee down. Inhaling to squeeze the hips in towards each other. Exhale, release the hips heavy. as long as this right knee is stacked right on top of the right ankle. This is a big safety concern here, so make sure to protect your ACL and your MCL. Make sure that your knee is right on top of the ankle. Go ahead and lift that back knee if you haven't already. Drop the back heel and pressing up into a warrior two. My front knee is down. I'm pressing on the outer edge of my back foot hips pressing open, and my fingertips are stretching wide. I can have my hands on my hips too. Whatever feels good. And just notice, am I pressing into one edge of the foot more than the other? Trying to really place the whole foot, placing every corner of that triangular base into the floor. All right, cartwheeling the arms down, framing the foot, lift the back heel, moving back, into the plank of your choice, high plank, modified high plank, forearm plank, they're all great. And on the next exhale, lowering down, inhale, upward dog or cobra, shoulders down, exhale, child's pose or downward dog. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, deepen, If we feel like our spine needs more flattening, lengthening work than the knees, so you can really focus on lifting the hips up and back. If you feel like your spine is flat, then you can go ahead and start straightening the legs out, pressing the heels down, opening up the hamstrings. All right, shifting the weight to the right. If we're in child's pose, we're coming to the knees, lifting the left leg up and back, and guiding the left foot forward Planting the left foot gently. Left knee is stacked right on top of the left ankle. This back right knee can be lifted or it can be resting on the floor. 
Really checking in with the alignment of our front knee. Inhaling to squeeze the hips in towards each other. Exhaling to release the hips heavy. Go ahead and drop that back knee if you haven't already. Pressing up to, sorry, lift that back knee and drop that back heel. Coming up into warrior two, left knee is stacked right on top of the left ankle. I'm pressing the outer edge of my back foot down. So I'm really feeling that engagement in my hips. Hips opening, we can have hands in the hips or reach the arms out. Pressing into all three corners of each foot. Feeling our hips engaged, our whole legs engaged. Breathing deeply here in warrior two. And cartwheeling the hands down when you're ready. Lifting the back heel. Press the palms into the floor. Lifting the foot to meet in a plank of your choice. Breathing in, breathing out. Please don't hold your breath here. And on your next exhale, bend the elbows lower down. Feel free to drop the knees. Inhaling into upward dog or cobra. And exhaling into downward dog or child's pose. <coughs> Feel free to wiggle the hips. Do what feels good. Listen to your body and respond to what your body's feeling by giving your body some goodness. Alternate bended knees, making sure all the knuckles and the palms are pressing into the floor, lifting those hips up and back. Gently lower the knees if you're in downward dog. And let's come to a comfortable seat. Ah, okay, some really great work. I know for me, I have a post-it on my desk in my new work from home desk that just says, take a body break. So every time I see it, I give myself a few sun salutations. I do one thing that feels good for my body. So. I'd love for us to think about what can we do to invite a little bit more body love into our lives. I like don't understand how this quarantine life has me like busier than I've ever been <laughs> working from home. So uh, figure out what can I do to remind myself to love my body, you know, a sun salutation, stepping outside to go do a downward dog just for a moment to lengthen the spine. Um, if you're doing a lot more sitting like I am, then it's all the more important to uh, take tension out of your body and to, to, to love it in this new way. So, okay. Um, next up, lengthening the left leg, bringing the right foot to the inside of the left thigh, Jhana Shirsasana, walking the hands down the left leg, find a spot where both hands can reach. So whether that's on the calf or the ankle, doesn't really matter where it is as long as both of our hands are there. Inhale, lengthen the spine, puff the chest forward. Exhale, round the spine and fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, round and fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, round and fold. Nice deep breaths. Pressing that left knee down, press the left leg into the floor. Engaging the strength of our hips and hamstrings to relieve tension. And build our mobility, walking the hands in. Let's go ahead and bring this left hand across the body to grab onto the right knee. Right arm reaches up and over. Feel the right fingertips stretch, reach wherever you are. Feel the obliques pressing out on the inhale, expand. Use your core strength to push out, to inflate your whole body. Exhale to deepen, release, relieve, deflate. 
searching that right shoulder into the back space. Gently release out and let's switch sides. Stretching the right leg long, pressing the left foot to the inside of the right thigh. Walk the hands down the right leg. Find a spot where both hands can reach. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Pressing that right knee into the floor. Press the back of the right leg into the floor. Inhaling to lengthen, expand. Exhaling to deepen, heavy. And walking the hands in, right hand across the chest, grabbing onto the left knee, reach the left arm up and over, really pressing this left hip down and out into the back left diagonal. Inhaling to expand, feel the obliques press out, use your core to expand, inflate with strength. Exhale to deepen the twist. Searching this left shoulder into our backspace. Notice, am I holding my body tight in any places? Where can I let go mentally so that my body can release and deepen into some of these spaces? Reaching up and back. Let's stretch both legs long, alternate flex and point. Drawing the feet into each other. Once again, bringing some love to our feet. Open the feet like a book. Really digging our thumbs into the triangular base of our foot. Really digging back into our arches. Noticing what else we can, what other fascia we can just flatten out by pressing with our thumbs. Self foot rubs are such a good way to love your body. Grabbing onto the ankles, inhale, lengthen the spine, open the chest, heart open, chest open, shoulders open. Inhale, finding length, reaching the top back of the head. Tall, relax the jaw, dropping the chin. And exhale, just reaching the chest forward. Even if we don't feel like we're folding, I don't want us to just bring the head down like this. I don't want us to round the spine. I want us to keep the spine nice and long because I really want to feel the pelvis tilting. So even if you're just energetically pulling, even if it just feels like work, but you're not actually folding very far, that's okay. We want to invite the work. This work is our way of loving our body and our practice this morning. So inhaling to lengthen, Exhaling to just feel the chest reaching forward, maybe noticing the pelvis starting to tilt forward. This is our pelvis right here. So our hips are starting to tilt. Just like when we were standing up, exploring those pelvic tilts, now our pelvis is tilting forward. Doesn't matter how far we're tilting as long as we're pulling, reaching energetically, using our muscles and our hips to reach forward. Few more deep breaths here, long, deep, expansive breaths. Feel the hips inflate on the inhale, exhale to feel heavier and heavier. And gently rolling up when you're ready. Let's close the knees. Planting the feet, hands behind us. Let's just rock the knees from side to side. Right now we're massaging the outer hips.
Coming back to center, reaching forward. Inhale, exhale, slowly rolling down. Use your core strength to hold tight on your way down. It's okay to fall. And once more, let's rock the knees from side to side. Drawing the right knee into the chest, stretch the left leg long. And if this is intense, we can always elevate this foot with a pillow or a book. Um, so hugging this right knee in, take a deep breath. <sighs> now I'm gonna be, I want us to be really careful here. Our knees are not meant to carry pressure or weight. So we're gonna press open, but please don't press on the knee. Press on the thigh or the shin. So pressing this right hip open, I'm pressing on my right thigh. Feeling the hips press open, I'm even gonna massage my left hip flexor with my left hand. So explore what feels good, find points of tension, like even just my side, my left oblique and my left outer hip. Massaging that with my left hand as I press, as I breathe deeply and press this right hip open. And I'm pressing pretty aggressively to open up. Drawing that knee back to center, take the left hand, grab onto the right knee, and guide that right leg across the body. Chin turning to the right, right shoulder pressing into the floor. Inhale, expand. Exhale, deep in the twist. Detoxing our body here. Inhale, expand. Exhale, twist. Now this first twist to the right is moving our digestion into our ascending colon. So we're really truly detoxing our body. We're helping push our digestion through. First we're pushing it up and then we'll push it down when we twist to the other side. One more deep breath. And before we switch, I like to give myself a little body roll here in a twist. Sometimes I can find new spine lengthening pops here. Coming back to center. Let's bring both feet to center, hugging the left knee in. Stretch the right leg long. Feel free to elevate that right foot or the right knee with a, with a book or bolster or block or pillow. Squeezing that left shin into the body, feeling the outer hip open up with the breath. and guiding this left hip to open to the left side. So I'm holding my shin as my left knee presses open or my left hip presses open. I'm not putting any pressure on my left knee itself. And then my right hand, I'm just massaging my right hip flexor, my right hip bone. Breathing deeply here. Draw the knee back to center. You lift the right hand, grab this left leg and pull across for a deep twist. So here, my chin's gonna turn to the left, left shoulder pressing into the floor. Inhale, feel the space around the spine expand, inflate. Exhale, twist deeper, deflate. We're pushing our digestion through to the descending colon, detoxing here. <sighs> Breathing deeply in this detox twist. I know I've been having to think about being more intentional around what I'm putting in my body and how much I'm putting in since groceries are stocked and grateful to have food in my pantry, you know, we're thinking about like, how much do I need to eat right now? Do I really need to eat right now? 
What does my body need? What is my body, what energy is my body telling me it needs? So inviting some more intention here in our love our body flow to think about what our body needs today. What love does our body need? And when we're ready, coming back to center, planting both feet, go ahead and rock the knees from side to side. All right. Give your body anything else it needs and then let's rest on the floor, stretching the legs long, walking the shoulders down, grabbing any props we might like. If you have a blanket, it might feel great to put that blanket or pillow underneath your lower back. It might feel great to tuck yourself in and just put a blanket over your body. We can also take our pillow I'm trying to grab it with my foot. <laughs> we can take our pillow and stack it underneath our knees for a little bit of elevation. Let's keep our head resting on the floor. If you want to elevate your head, I would do it with a blanket and not a pillow so that we don't feel any compression in the neck like this. Let's go ahead and just let the, the head rest heavy. Shoulders resting heavy. Ankles, feet, toes, relaxing heavy. Here in Shavasana, corpse pose, we're trying to do no work at all. So we're locating what parts of our body are doing work and how can we release that part of our body? Maybe we need to stick a, a blanket or a pillow underneath so that our body can just rest. The nice thing about using props is it gives our body more sensory input. We have the blanket, you know, pillows, all of those elements um, give our body, our nervous system specifically, a sense of safety so that we can activate the parasympathetic nervous system so that we can digest, so that our sex drive is healthy, so that um, all of our vital organs are operating at full capacity. So taking these moments to rest, even if you feel stressed mentally while you're resting, putting your body in this resting position, putting props where they, wherever um, your body is feeling like it's doing work, covering your body with a blanket and just resting here, even if you're stressing out mentally, you can trust that your nervous system is receiving sensory input from all the nerves throughout our body. It's feeling super supported and it's feeling safe. And so it's gonna kick in some healthy vital organs and make sure that all the parts of our body are functioning at full capacity. Letting the hips feel heavy, spine heavy, shoulders melting into the floor, relaxing the jaw, relax the cheekbones. Sometimes when I close my eyes, even my eyebrows are doing work to keep my eyes closed. So release the eyebrows, release the forehead. Just relax. Some of us might like to let the mind wander. Some of us might want to focus on the breath. Invite us to cultivate love for our breath, our filter, our life force, our inspiration.
Wiggle the fingers, wiggle the toes. Bringing our attention back to our bodies on this floor, in our space, with each other virtually. Let's take three sighs of relief, breathing in. <sighs> Again, breathing in. Ah. One more time, let it all out, y'all. Breathing in. Ah. When you're ready, rolling over to your right side, curling up in a ball. Find a moment of comfort here in the fetal position. This is such a great position to love your body, to bring ourselves back to earth when we're feeling high stress, high anxiety, high depression. This is such a good way to help our nervous system feel like we're safe so that our body can adjust and bring us out of crisis, trauma, trigger mode, and feeling a little bit more balanced, helping our organs function properly. We are all in crisis. This is a global, tra globally traumatic experience. So finding these restorative spaces for ourselves on a daily basis is so, so important to maintain our mental health, our physical health, our emotional health. So we can stay here as long as we like. If you're still in Shavasana, that's great. But if you're ready, I'll invite us to press up to a comfortable seat. Finding comfort, wiggle the hips, lengthen the spine. Close the eyes and drop into the breath. I just wanna say I really love, the suggestion for Love Your Body came, flow came from a friend, Chloe, and I think this is such a great theme to explore together during this time. In so many ways, I think we're so, we're not socialized to love our bodies. We're not socialized or educated in our school system to learn how to take care of our bodies fully. You know, maybe we take a semester of health class in high school, but our body is such an important part of our human experience. And I wish that we had more space for it. And I'm grateful that we're exploring these things together. But I also wanna say that I think by design, the school system um, in particular socializes us to ignore how we're feeling, to push through and produce, um, especially for people of color, queer and trans folks and women in the school system um, and in society, in the media, we're just not all socialized to love our bodies as they are. Um, and so here in this practice, the invitation, the decolonizing practice, here is to take the space, to claim the space, to care for the body, to listen to the body, to always grow in understanding with the body, to unlearn and relearn and unlearn again and relearn again. And I'm just really grateful for this space with you all to love my body and to love our bodies together. leaving the hands where they are, bringing the hands to heart center or resting the hands over the heartbeat. A breath for the ancestors we bring to our space and for the indigenous people who were here before colonization, breathing in and out. A breath to thank yourself for your practice today, for your loving your body today, breathing in and out. A breath to appreciate others for their support, breathing in and out. And a breath for the intentions and well-being of everyone in this community we're building together, everyone in the whole world, breathing in and out.
The loving human in me bows down to the loving human in you. Namaste. Okay, I think this marks our three week anniversary for our daily morning glitter goddess yoga practice. Um, thank you for loving your body with me this morning. Spread the word. The more people breathing and practicing strength, resilience, and self love together, um, the better, the healthier we will be and stay. Um, and then, last, you know, the reality is this COVID 19 crisis is illuminating so many institutional um, injustices uh, and, and really bringing those to front and center. And part of Part of yoga for all of yoga for me is actually about decolonization. All of all of this practice is about decolonizing the body and rewiring ourselves to practice self care and to to really be in touch and in conversation with our vessel. Um, so, uh, part of this work is also that institutional decolonization work and bringing some balance to the world in that way. So. Um, all the funds that we collect from these yoga classes are going into the pockets of queer trans POC families in need, queer trans POC families who are affected by COVID-19. Um, I know we're all affected by COVID-19, but the reality is that some folks are just hit harder. You know, I have the privilege to teach you from my living room and to, to engage in virtual work from home with my school at TAPA and many folks are having to go to work or have lost their jobs or lost hours or struggling to get groceries or struggling to refill prescriptions. Um, so trying to really help the people I love and care about here in this community. So many friends and family um, are in this tough position. So please donate what you can. Um, my Venmo is Matthew R. Garza and my um, cash app is Garza Smash. But shoot me a message if you wanna donate because I'd love for it to be a conversation. Um, we've raised just about $6,000 so far. We've struggled to get donations in the past few days, um, which is understandable because there's been such an a, a overflowing um, output of generosity. But if you can spare $5, $10, $200, $500, there's a lot of need coming in on a daily basis for queer trans POC families here in New England. So reach out if your family's in need and could use some support. Um, and if you have something to give, please reach out and send a donation on Cash App or Venmo. Sending you lots of love and we'll see you tomorrow morning for a fast flow. Tomorrow we're going to move fast, so get ready. Um, totally optional. If you prefer to just do one of our other flows, that's fine. But we had some requests to do something fast and hard. So tomorrow on Sunday, we're going to do something fast and hard. All right, cool. Later, y'all.